Hey everybody, it's Ike and our special guest again. Bobby Garcia. He's starting to become a regular on this show. Uh, Christine's not here today. Once again, she got deployed. She's been getting deployed for this last year. It seems like every other month. We miss her and hopefully she'll be back here anytime soon. Uh, so the judge is gonna take her spot. And today for our beer challenge, he actually brought this beer a while back and it's been in storage. We forgot about it, but it's called Beer Against Humanity. Kind of like the Cards Against Humanity. And what kind of beer is this, Chief? It is an IPA, it's an Indian Pale Ale, New Mexico style. 7% alcohol by volume. IPA. <laughs> yeah, you can't get away from those, huh? Let's give it a try. Let's see. Mm, and pros. Pros. It is an IPA, I smell that. Oh yeah. Tastes like any IPA I've ever had. It does, it does. That's, That's yeah, I give it a six. It's not bad, it's a six. On the IPA scale, I'll give this a probably a six or a seven, because it's not one of those killer IPAs that's right. so strong. And right, it's got a nice little fruity, fruity back end to it. Yeah, it's not bad. Not too bad. And so once again, we're gonna do a shout out to uh, Mr. Larry Lawson. Uh, I just talked to him via text yesterday and Lucky Stiff is going to uh, some old haunted amusement ground. Was that right? In Virginia, I think it is. Very nice. Uh, I'm not gonna give too much away because he's gonna do a live feed on Facebook and a video. Sweet. But uh, Good luck, Larry. Just, this, this amusement park is built on an old Indian burial ground and kids oh, have gotten killed okay, there. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, familiar, I'm familiar with that one, yeah. <laughs> Tons of good stuff. So he's gonna spend, I think, a night or two over there with some of his Florida buddies. And uh, man, I wish I could be there. That'd be, that'd be cool. That'd be a good time. That'd be cool. Weather's well, so, getting a little cooler, so enjoy. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be definitely cooler over there. So I think he's doing that November 7th, I believe. So on a Sunday? Check, probably, yeah. Sunday, okay. So check out Indian River Hauntings uh, or, or go to his uh, Facebook or to his YouTube channel and I'm sure he'll keep you updated. Should be a lot of fun. Um, Chris Hoff in England. Uh, I understand he's going to be putting out more videos again of his World War II. Oh, very nice. Haunted places in England. Very nice. I love those things. He's been, he dropped out for a little while because I think people were hacking his Facebook and YouTube. But he's making a comeback and I actually really enjoy those videos. They're really cool. He, yeah. he spends a lot of time putting those things together and uh, they should be coming out to New Mexico maybe next year or the year mm -hmm. after. We're going to throw him a party, right, Chief? I have the beer. <laughs> I will, I'll buy the beer. Yes. We're going to show him some New Mexico hauntings. And, yes, we will. And some green chili. Green chili. Yeah, absolutely. That'll be a culture shock for Chris. <laughs> <laughs> but you, uh, You'll love it. You'll love it. Yeah, some good stuff. So on a different note, uh, we're just around the corner from Halloween. I was hoping to do some kind of Halloween, uh, maybe investigation somewhere. And depending what Christine's up to, if she ever gets released from uh, Uncle Sam. And I'm hoping that you'll come along too. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, since you're becoming a regular on this show. I mean, we, we still have that room at the, at the hotel. We have a haunted hotel room where a person had hanged himself and guests are checking in and checking out early. It's a closed investigation, Larry, so don't, don't worry, it's done. It's closed. <laughs> <laughs> we also have a, a guy who claims his house is haunted. Yes. Uh, that'd be a good one to that check out. That would be very good. That one, I'm, I'm excited, because he's, he's really excited about yeah. that. And he said there's a lot of activity, so. That'd be awesome. And then there's, a, I have another contact that told me constantly sees unidentified flying objects uh, south west of us at the Ladrone Peak. Really? Which is the mountain by Socorro, back near that pointy tall mountain. Uh, it's, it's a wilderness area and it's really remote. There's no paved roads going to it. It's all gravel road. It's out in the middle of nowhere. But this guy has actually seen it so many times he's taken his wife out there just to watch it. Hmm. So that'd be kind of fun to check out too. It'd be interesting. Some UFO watching. So a lot of stuff going on and uh, we just got to get it done. Like I said, it's kind of slow going right now because of the virus. It's just putting the damp on everything and the state's getting worse it seems like right now it is it is so we're just going to keep on trucking i guess uh, activity is up at my house not this house but the house i live in and uh just prior to firing up this camera about an hour ago my wife called me and said uh in her one of her spare bedrooms a seashell flew off the shelf and landed on the other side of the room and hit the wall um hmm. and this morning there was a light anomaly in my house, and last night I was watching television, and uh, 
had one of those digital glitches just for a second on the TV screen, and at the same time, my dog Higgins, which you've seen on this video before, jumped off the couch and ran over towards my piano. I just started staring and kind of like low growling at the piano, which is something he doesn't do. So it's almost like some kind of electrical interference happened for just a second there. Um, also, out of the corner of my eye, I keep seeing something fairly short. Maybe Chris can help us out with that. <laughs> but uh, it's probably about three, three and a half feet tall. It's just a shadowy, dark mass. And I've seen it here, but I see it more at my other house. So I think it follows me. But I see it quite often. Hmm, maybe it's just a floater in the eye, but I see it quite often. Do you get any correlation with the, the cemetery, with the bones? The you last know, place, the Taos? I don't think so. I don't know. It, that's a good question because somebody actually responded to my YouTube video and said, did you do anything with the bones? Did you rebury them and stuff? And my response was no, because I'm not sure right. if there were human bones to begin with. Right. And two, I don't know if those bones belong to that grave, and that may not be the right thing to do, is <laughs> taking right. somebody else's bones and stick them in somebody else's grave. So I, I, I didn't touch them. I didn't move them around. I figured just leave it alone. I don't think anything followed me home from that place. I don't get that feeling at all. I think it's just that time of the year. There's something about fall, and especially closer you get to Halloween, it just seems to get a little more paranormal around here. Hmm, interesting. Uh, no, I was always being curious if that, that is legitimately something that could happen, that you can go to a place like that and something comes home with you. I do believe that. I think the mine shafts, I've, you know, many years ago, Pretty sure I brought stuff home because I found a lot of old artifacts, and I think things attach themselves to artifacts. Oh, okay. You yeah. brought them home. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And pottery, I found pottery and stuff. So uh, I'm sure that's why my other house has got a lot of activities because I have a lot of artifacts, some dating back, you know, super old. Very so, interesting. Uh, pretty sure maybe that's what's causing it at my house. I don't mind it. I don't try to exercise my house. You know, the power of Christ compels you to be gone. Type <laughs> stuff. I kind of like it as long as it doesn't harm me. You right. know, or it's malicious or what's it? I don't care. They're right. welcome at my house. You know, bring it. Cool. <laughs> so the Halloween getting closer, you know, the veil, the veil is thinning. That's always, I don't know where I get that from. I'm sure I read it somewhere many years ago, but the reason for Halloween is that time of year where, you know, the, the, the veil between the dead and the living is the closest. And I kind of believe that because we've had a lot of weird experiences around Halloween. At that time of year, not just the day Halloween, but leading up to it and afterwards. But are, you, are you talking about law enforcement stuff? Law enforcement just, stuff, or even before. I mean, I think that's just a normal day in law enforcement, though, you know? Yeah, or even before I got into law enforcement. You have crazy like things going on in Halloween all the time. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, the one, one of my most clearest Halloween day uh, things that I've experienced was when I was a log truck driver. I used to you know, haul logs to the sawmill, which was... A huge round trip. It was from, from Albuquerque up to behind Mount Taylor and back and three times a day. And there's a road, Highway 6, that goes from Las Lunas to I-40. Mm -hmm. It's a two-lane road back then. It was really a deserted, no-traffic kind of road. And I was coming across. It was like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And I'm um, driving along, and I'm getting ready to come around the corner. And I see a motorhome sitting on the... There's not much of a shoulder. It's only like a couple of feet wide. But there's a motorhome sitting halfway in the lane, halfway on the shoulder with its emergency flashers on and when you're driving a semi, it's kind of irritating because you have a bunch of gears to go through to slow down. You can't just whip around them, you know. Right. So you, I'm downshifting. I'm slowing down. I'm slowing down. I'm down to like 30 miles an hour, and the motorhome's gone. <laughs> and I've seen that motorhome clear as day. <laughs> it had a bicycle rack on the back with a bicycle on it. Yeah. You know, I don't know if it was just a daytime hallucination. I wasn't tired. It was, Did you, you know, take your eyes off it and disappear? Yeah, you know, when you're driving a truck, you're always shifting and doing crap. Hmm. And I've seen it, and I'm like, oh, shit. And I slow down. I look up. He's still there. I slow down. Look up. He's gone. Hmm. There wasn't a freaking motorhome on that road. It was so vivid, so clear. And uh, later on, you've, I've, I found out that that road is really rumored to be haunted. Highway 6 has a lot of anomalies. A lot, of, a lot of weird stuff happens on that road. I also seen my first fatality on that road. Oh, when did I was you? driving electric, yeah. It's a Jeep from the reservation. And I, he passed me, and they were all in butt. It was like a man and a woman in the open Jeep. And, you know, I was probably doing 65, and they passed me, probably doing 80. Wow. On that little road, and I'm like, ooh. And a little ways down the road, there they were. And the Jeep was on its side, and both of them had been ejected. And both of them were dead. And I, that was really the first time I had to deal with a fatality. Right. And uh, there's no cell phone service out there. Ooh. And I was like, oh, well, what do I do now? You know, I get out, and I'm like, oh, shit. And uh, a tanker truck came along, and I said, hey, uh, he didn't even want to get out of his truck. He was, like, 
turning white just seeing <laughs> right. and then he said he's going to go into the town which was about 10 miles away and call the police so i stayed out there probably 30 minutes at least before anybody showed up and i'm just staring at these you know dead bodies laying on the road and right. it was pretty spooky yeah, nothing, <laughs> nothing you can do for them from I mean, that point was. on every time i drove past that spot especially at night Man, that's all I think about. You know, I hope I don't come around this corner and see those bodies laying there. Right. I never did. Yeah. <laughs> but it was a horrible wreck, man. Horrible. Happens mm -hmm. so much. Yeah. Now, dead bodies always have that creep factor. They do. I mean, yeah. I don't care how many times you see them. They always have that creep factor because, you know, in law enforcement, we always see, you know, dead bodies and we go into a, a home or something like that and you kind of size them up like, I hope this person doesn't jump up all of a sudden, you know? Yeah. It's, and that, to me, the biggest thing when I've seen a dead body in law enforcement, it's always like... The shock value of the essence of life is gone. You know, just a few minutes ago, this person was a living, breathing, thinking, talking, right. you know, person. And now it's just a body. Yeah. The essence of life is gone and already like behind me, staring down at right. me right now. Right. You know, it, it's it's always weird. You, I've never really got used to it. And you and I both have seen hundreds yeah. you know, of dead people. I, I've never really got used to that. No, I don't, I don't think you ever do. I mean, you know, de death is one it's of It's this weird things. macabre thing where it's almost a little bit fascinating. Absolutely. You want to see it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everyone wants to see the dead body. You and know, then when you do wrecks, see it, it's like, yeah, I probably shouldn't have seen that. <laughs> you know, car wrecks, train wrecks, whatever. You have people look, you lose. All, everyone wants to see the dead body. Mangled oh, yeah. is the worst, you know. Absolutely. Like, like the, the freeway, the interstate is, man, we've seen some horrible things oh, yeah. out there. It's unforgiving. You know, everything from decapitations to just limbs ripped off to... Yep. Oh, it's it's probably stuff you don't need to see. You want to kind of see it because you're curious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's but, always that curious factor. Yeah. Then I think all that stuff stores in your brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, eventually it does. Yeah. <laughs> there comes a point where like, yeah, I don't really need to see that. Suicides used to be terrible. You know, people that, especially headshots, people right. that, yeah, those never made any sense to me. But it's so prevalent. You know, unless you're in law enforcement or maybe an EMT or something, you don't really realize how many people get killed all the time. Right, right. It's nonstop. Between the cars and people shooting themselves and hanging themselves, it's, well, I mean, normal it's a continuous people, cycle. They don't see that. No, you know? It's just not the norm for them. No, and unless they know that person, they don't know. It's, right. yeah. That's an odd topic we get off on. Yeah, we just we did uh, on tangent there. Don't you? <laughs> <laughs> but Larry probably knows what we're talking about. You know, he's a cop for a long time, and now he's a, a detective, a private investigator. Nice. I'm curious if he's grown that Magnum P.I. mustache yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very nice. <laughs> that beer's pretty good. It's not bad. It gets better the more you drink it. Of course, I think it's pretty much every beer. But you know, Probably. I so have you had any uh, weird paranormal experiences in your house or anything like that? I have not. I have not, no. I mean, um, no, no. In my, the, my house, I don't have any creep factor. I don't have anything. I've never felt uncomfortable. Um, when I first moved to, to this locale back in the early 90s, you know, we lived out, out in the country in this one place we were renting. And that place, I'd always have nightmares. I mean, those weird nightmares where you're dreaming within a dream, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and I'd always see a lady coming at me with an axe. And, oh. Uh, and my wife would always tell me, you're, you're screaming. I'm not going in there. You know, and I'm like, well, I don't, I don't remember that. And of course, my, my little daughter, when she was just a little baby, would always look up and my wife would call me. I'd be working a graveyard shift or something. And you were law enforcement already? I was, yeah, for Moriarty. That would explain that dream. And, uh, and my wife said, Amber's talking to someone. I'm like, huh? Oh. She's looking at the corner of there talking to somebody. She said, it's some lady. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, <laughs> That's not good. No, it's not good. <laughs> but that house was always a little creepy, you know. But, but I, I always attributed it to, to too many late nights, working too long, you know, stuff like that. Just being tired. But well, there's a cop dream. And, and I don't know if that's what it's called. That's what I call it. But pretty much every cop you talk to has reoccurring dreams. Mine has always been shooting somebody and it had no effect. Like I'm fighting for my life and I'm emptying out my weapon and I might as well be squirting Windex at him because <laughs> it's not working. Right, right. And that's a reoccurring dream I had through my entire career. And it didn't happen, you know, maybe once every six months I would have that dream. But it, it was a reoccurring dream. Not exactly the same thing, but it always ended up the same way where I'd have to draw my weapon and I'm, the weapon works. And I can see rounds hitting, but it's not having any effect at all. Wow. And there's so many cops that have dreams like that. I think it's just a stress from the job, maybe. Uh, well, I, I, that and I think that we literally play our mortality, you know, in our minds and in our dreams because we're going through a, a picture of what's happening, like a movie, basically, of what's happening with us 
and we always want the best case scenario to turn out and sometimes it doesn't mm -hmm. because your mind's a little bit different and you know there's always that that time when you're sitting there going oh well, okay i'm going to fail this time i'm not going to do it right you know yeah. it, it's, it's trial and error but a practice and you know as well as I, you know practice the, the range doing all the stuff you have to do when it comes time to that it's it's second nature muscle memory you know you're out there you're doing what you have to do but dreams that's a whole different beast you yeah know? dreams you know your mind is going to control the aspect of your dream the way it wants to and i think it, as cops we always have that reality in the back of our mind where you know shit could go wrong easy oh absolutely i've had that many times like one of my episodes where i've talked you know did i make it home tonight um, those, those are legit stories i mean i really pulled up in front of my house and i was like i'm not really sure if i survived tonight or not right you know i was shot at three times and uh well, that, that, I think that's where we get cop intuition from, you know? Yeah. Like when you, you, you're alone in the graveyard, you know, and there's hardly anybody out or anybody out. You're the only person out. You stop a car and you get that weird feeling. You're like, have a nice night. Yeah, later. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. It, yeah. it's, it's intuition based, not fear based. Correct. Because how many times have you cleared a house by yourself? Right. You know, there's been countless houses I, in the night. I'd be there by myself. There's no backup around. I'd grab my flashlight and my weapon out and I'm clearing room by room by myself and and then other times you'll pull up to a house and you'll have backup with you and like, oh, something ain't right here. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about this one. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, intuition is, is, it definitely works. I mean, the, your sixth sense is. You know, those are always the worst ones when you got to clear a house and you know the person inside is dead because oh. they call for a welfare check. <laughs> yes. And you have no idea the layout of the house. <laughs> you don't know where the lights are. But you're crawling through a window yeah. and you're going around the corner and you're like, oh shit, there's going to be a dead person around yeah. this corner. And, and, no matter how many times you see a dead body, it's still going to freak you out and yeah. kind of spook you. The only saving grace is, is before you open the door, there's a bunch of green flies on the window. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, or yeah, the smell. Yeah, or the smell. You're like, oh, okay, never mind, I have to go in. Yeah, I don't need to call, call the ambulance. Yeah, I don't have to go in there. But no, you're absolutely right. I mean, more than once, you're clearing a house because they haven't seen the person in a while. And you're like at the last room, and you open the door, and of course they're naked. Don't die naked. Right. Everybody dies naked yeah, at all. They do. Yeah. Or on the toilet. Yeah. That's not a good yeah. one either. Yeah, so, but more and more often than not, you're like naked, stuck to the carpet. That's, that's and true. And I'm like, oh, don't need to see that one again. Or, or cats. Yes. If you have a lot of cats, good luck if you die, because <laughs> if they're not fed, they're going to they're gonna certainly <laughs> They'll turn on. enjoy you a different way than they did in life. So. Yes. I guess, oh, we were off in the macabre again. Yeah, we are. I seen a dead person on the couch one time, and her arm was hanging down the side of the couch. And the mice had eaten all the flesh around one of the finger all the way to the bone. So all, all her fingers had looked normal and black, except for one finger was a skeletonized finger, hmm. where the rats have just chewed up all the meat up to one finger. Interesting. The strangest yeah. thing, you know, the weirdest thing ever. Yeah. Those, um, there you go. You start a new show with your yeah. macabre nonsense and what you've seen and the craziness. Yeah, yeah that's not really paranormal, but I, well, I guess that's kind of what makes us venture off into that direction because just... You know, it's been my experience, cops, a lot of cops believe in the paranormal. Doctors, of all people, believe in the paranormal. Highly educated people, they're scientists. Yeah. But they believe there's something more out there. There's stuff they can't explain. You know, oh my. Uh, our oh my from out here, you know, it's been like one of the longest oh my's in the history of the state of New Mexico. It's literally seen probably 100,000 dead people. And he believes in the paranormal. I bet he has some pretty interesting stories. He, I've tried to get him on the show, but he's getting up in the years. And um, he hasn't committed to it just quite yet. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it, he'd be fascinating to have on everything. He would. He really would. He also, he was a OMI on the reservation, Laguna, I believe. And he says the customs they had over there. Oh, he wasn't an OMI. He was actually a police officer over there on the reservation. He was a reservation cop. And he says the customs and rituals they have over there around dead people is pretty fascinating. And he said he didn't buy and believe buy into it or believe any of that stuff until right. he seen it with his own eyes. He goes, "There's definitely something more going on <laughs> that we don't know about." <laughs> well, you know, as, as a as a new cop, when I came here to Moyerty, I was already a seasoned cop. I'd already seen dead bodies. I already dealt with stuff like that. But I'd always heard that uh, the that, OMI he would he would uh, kind of initiate you. Oh yeah. If you ever went to a death scene, he would he would initiate you into the the realm of the dead. Oh so to speak. yes. But it didn't work with me because I'd already, you know, I'd already seen this stuff. And he, and if he knows that you, he's not going to get you or do something to you, he'd be like, okay, he'll talk to you about everything. I've seen him be incredibly horrible mean to <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Go to the refrigerator and fix me a sandwich. Yeah. He doesn't, yeah. <laughs> doesn't have patience for that. Yeah. <laughs> or hold this for me. Or like, oh, no. Yeah. No, yeah. But no, he, he, he had a great sense of humor. He's pretty well, cool. He still does, I'm sure. Yeah. I haven't talked to him in a while. Very cool. 
So we touched on that. We were talking about dreams. We were. Have you ever had a lucid dream where you could control it? Uh, yes, yes. I have. I can't remember if I ever did or not. I've had dreams that were, were incredibly real. When I woke up, I'm like, holy shit, you know. But, but the worst ones for me, they're, I don't know, uh, they're not the paralysis ones where you can't move or nothing yeah. like that. It's like a dream within a dream. Because you're dreaming, but you're dreaming in your dream. And you wake up in your dream, but you're still dreaming. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. That is a horrible thing. I've never had that, but that makes sense. That, that is horrible because the dream within the dream is probably worse than the actual dream. But you wake up from the worst nightmare, but you're still asleep dreaming, and that thing comes back <laughs> in yeah. that dream. You're like, oh my God, yeah. That, yeah, that's, that's weird. So that, that's interesting. Yeah. One of the most vivid dreams I had is when one of our friends, I don't know if you were friends with Dominic or not. Yeah. But uh, he was a really good friend of mine when he got killed. And I was in California when he got killed. And man, that was an, I dreamt that he died in the hospital before I got notified that he died. Really? And it was really strange because him and I are walking. He, uh, he grew up in a town called Belen, New Mexico, south of here. And I used to live in Belen many years ago. But in this dream, it's like 10 o'clock at night. And I'm in San Diego, and I'm having this dream where him and I are walking through a Walmart parking lot. Parking lot. Beautiful blue sky, sunny day. And uh, he's just talking about he loved old cars and hot rods, and he's t telling me about rebuilding his old Dodge. And I'm looking at him, I'm saying, uh, hey, Dahmer, you do know you died, right? And he goes, yeah, I know. And he goes, you know, it's not as bad. It's, it's, it's fine. I'm fine. You know, you just move on. I'm fine. And I woke up. And this may sound like bullshit, but... 15 minutes or so later, my phone rings, and that's a friend, uh, Joseph Baca, who's been on one of our shows. Yeah. He goes, bad news, Dahmer just died. They just unplugged him at the hospital. So I dreamt 15 minutes prior to him, me being notified. So about the time he died is when I had that dream. Hmm. And up to this day, that's probably been the most clearest dream I've ever had. It makes no sense because, you know, my mom died, my dad died. I've had many other people, right. other friends that died. They didn't come to me in my dream. Why he came to my dream, I don't know. Well, maybe, maybe you were his last thought in his, you know. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe but, you, uh, you know, it, it was strange. It was such a realistic dream, but even now, I can remember it as clear as day. It was like... Did, how did that make you feel? Did you find some peace in it? Not really. No. It was, it was shocking. You know, I, I had to get up and I just went for a walk by myself on the beach. And, and uh, it, it was just strange because... Up until that point, we didn't think he was going to die. <laughs> right. Know, he was hit by a car, but we thought, you know... Yeah. But I mean, he, he, he told you he was okay. Yeah. He said he was fine. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if that's your mind, you know, rationalizing things to make you feel better or if he really came to see me. Whatever it was, it was a really amazing dream. So strange topics, we're just chit-chatting. Yeah, we're just all over the place. Yeah, we're just jumping back and forth. So uh, do you have anything to say before we shut this down? Uh, just thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. I appreciate anytime. you coming here. And for everyone out there, happy Halloween. Enjoy yes. it. Be safe and take care of each other. And maybe we'll have something come up before Halloween. We'll see. Cool. All right. All right. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.